right there. Right back at him. Got another one. Hey guys, what's going on? Chris here with Shughead Gaming, bringing you my review for Vader Immortal, a Star Wars series developed by ILM X Lab and published by Disney Interactive Studios. Originally exclusive to the Oculus Quest and Rift S, this previously released in three individual episodes. It now makes its way to the PSVR headset as a complete trilogy. The complete set retails for an estimated price of $30, but of course that depends on your region and platform. As a smuggler hired by a Sith Lord to operate on Darth Vader's home planet of Mustafar, you find yourself caught up in the Battle of Powers to, no surprise, rule the galaxy. Using your lightsaber and your newly acquired force abilities, you become the sole hope to foil Vader's nefarious plans and eventually duel with the infamous Sith Lord himself. Written by David Goyer, writer of just a few things you might know, and developed by a division of Industrial Light and Magic, a company that basically invented modern visual effects, Vader Immortal looks amazing, but does it have any depth beyond a simple experience? Join me while I tear it down and find out. As always guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button. It not only helps out my channel, but VR gaming as a whole. And if you'd like to see more VR content from me, please consider subscribing and for video updates, hit that bell icon. Let's kick things off with a look at graphics. Let's be honest, Star Wars games, although incredibly hit or miss on the gameplay side of things, rarely fail to impress on the visual side of things. And the Vader Immortal series certainly is a nice looking game, regardless of what platform you play it on. Sure, there are some extra effects and upgraded textures here and there on the PC version, but really the biggest difference across all three platforms comes down to a simple matter of resolution and anti-aliasing. That being said, the Quest version is a shockingly nice looking game, and certainly not a jagged mess, with the PSVR version resting somewhere in the middle of the Quest and PC version in terms of overall clarity and effects. Developer ILM X Lab has wisely made a game that uses VR's strengths and usually avoids its shortcomings. That means environments tend to be a little more conservative in their size, allowing the dev to focus what resources they do have on higher detailed textures, character animations, and a more sophisticated lighting engine, resulting in a game world that really feels like part of the Star Wars universe we all identify with. And with the exception of a touch of texture pop in here and there, and some jagged edges in the larger, more ambitious set pieces, Vader Immortal is easily one of the nicest looking releases across all three platforms. With light lightsaber in hand, I dare anyone to come out of any of the game's short but sweet action scenes and not feel like they might have just tasted their little kid fantasy of being a Jedi. To put it simply, when walking around the familiar Imperial set pieces found predominantly in episodes 1 and 3, you will feel at times like you are walking inside a genuine film set. On the more critical side of things, I did find that some of the game's areas came off a little too dark, and character animations, while certainly impressive, aren't quite top tier for VR. Being much more of an experience than a full-fledged game, rarely does the game ever really get to stretch its legs, but with its roughly two-hour runtime that it has to tell its three-part story, it does manage to take the player on a nice little journey, offering a nice variety in locations, making sure that Vader Immortal Wells Short never suffers from a feeling of visual boredom or deja vu. All in all, Vader Immortal is another example of what current VR can offer when enough money is thrown at it. It is certain to make you yearn for a full-length game in this world, and while that is most definitely frustrating, this is definitely a visual proof of concept that even current gen hardware can and does produce some amazing VR visuals. Sound is up next. You have acquitted yourself well. I will not be denied. You will help seize the Bright Star. I sense a latent force ability within you. Follow me and I will instruct you in its ways. You will need the force if you are to survive the path ahead. I can activate them, but I'm going to Can you cover me? Like the visuals, I can't really think of a Star Wars game that sounded like crap, and with access to the Lucasfilm sound vault, they really have no excuse not to sound the part. Vader Immortal's sound effects are again no exception, and from the scream of a TIE fighter overhead or the hum of your lightsaber, everything here is in brilliant 3D audio, making sure you feel appropriately wrapped in a warm Star Wars blanket. 
For me personally, the Star Wars films have always been a form of movie comfort food, due largely to the music scores of John Williams. Many composers have since played in the Star Wars pond, but the John Williams template has rarely been messed with. In Vader Immortal, veteran video game composer Chris Velasco keeps this tradition alive, delivering an original score that, pun intended, hits all the right notes. You won't find any new memorable themes here, but the soundtrack on hand does a nice job of feeling like Star Wars, but without totally aping what has come before it, resulting in a varied score that feels unique yet very familiar, hitting me right in the comfort field. Voice acting, however, was a bit of a mixed bag for me. Actress Maya Rudolph voices your main companion on this journey in the form of the droid Zeto E3. The problem here really isn't the performance, it's just that Zeto E3 is, I'm guessing, meant to be funny and charming, and it isn't, making me very quickly want to donate her to the Jawas. Other performances throughout are handled expertly, but my other issue lies in the casting of Vader's voice. Actor Scott Lawrence delivers an acceptable rendition of one of the most famous voices in cinema, yet he often simply lacks the bass and gravitas of the character, making me wonder why ILM X Lab chose to go this route over voice actor Matt Sloan, who had basically taken the video game reins of Vader and voiced him over the past 14 years after blowing people's minds on his web series, Chad Vader Night Manager. <coughs> Clarissa, I noticed your shift ends at 6 o'clock tonight. Yeah, Lord Vader. Please, call me Chad. Yes, Chad. I would like you to meet me at Gino's Pizzeria facility to, um, discuss some plans I have for a more powerful laser checkout system. And for dinner. Scott Lawrence definitely doesn't suck, but I was always cringing just a little bit as he always sounded like a Vader if Obi-Wan had kept chopping off body parts at the end of Episode 3. And that brings us to gameplay. Calling the Vader Immortal series a Star Wars experience just doesn't seem accurate as it lends one to think that they will be sitting and simply watching a VR movie for two hours. And while this certainly is not a game for gamers, you will certainly be playing Vader Immortal for much of its playtime. Accessibility and mainstream appeal is certainly the goal here in the gameplay department, keeping things pretty straightforward and intuitive, with much of the gameplay being slightly different riffs on walk, turn, grab, and pull. Some competent climbing sequences mix up these core mechanics, and outside of the light combat, that's it. It's simple, competent, and intuitive, and it works, but it is also very paint-by-numbers VR. Combat-wise, Vader Immortal drip feeds the gamer a few abilities across the three-episode story arc, with the lightsaber being introduced in Episode 1, force-grabbing and throwing in Episode 2, and Episode 3 adding in some light blaster gunplay. Lightsaber play is awesome, but unfortunately used sparingly for anything other than blocking laser fire, and while fun as hell, it still feels like a bit of a tease until the final climax of the series when going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Vader himself. What I did like was that I was able to sheath my saber at my waist, choosing when to bust it out and turning it on and off at will. The introduction of force powers while limited to grabbing makes you feel powerful in VR and really livens up the gameplay when using conjunction with your lightsaber, opening up a few more options in how you take on the waves of stormtroopers and other random minions. Bottom line, Vader Mortal can be a slow burn at times and often very simple on the gameplay side of things, but when it finally starts to flex near the end of Episode 2 and into Episode 3, it certainly succeeds at making you feel like a Jedi badass. Story-wise, things are simply okay. Writer David S. Goyer has proven to be a bit hit or miss over his impressive list of writing credits, and I certainly wouldn't say that Vader Immortal is him at his best, coming off interesting enough to carry the two-hour experience, but also never being all that captivating. Dialogue throughout is serviceable but forgettable, never really exceeding typical video game storytelling tropes or adding much to the Star Wars canon. Vader Immortal requires the use of two motion controllers and tracks well across all three versions. It can be played seated or standing, but does play better standing. A decent amount of room is recommended with a 6x6 foot play space recommended by the developers. Unfortunately, and for some, this may be a huge disappointment is that the PSVR version lacks the option to have full locomotion and instead are limited to teleportation only. Given that the Quest has full locomotion on its lower powered hardware, this is honestly ridiculous and unacceptable, especially at this point in VR. The simplistic nature of the gameplay along with the switch to 180 degree combat helps mitigate this omission, but there is no way around it. PSVR headsets got screwed. This is almost certainly to be added back in as the PSVR community is sure to revolt, but seriously? What the fuck? Shackhead Gaming! As a game built to be accessible to the masses, comfort options are front and center here, offering the usual blinders, click turning, and of course, teleportation options. But for VR veterans on the PSVR side of things, the option to play this the way we want simply isn't there right now. And finally, that brings me to Fun Factor and my final review. 
The Star Wars Vader Immortal series is a AAA narrative-based adventure that has just enough story and gameplay to remain fun and interesting for its two-hour runtime. Unfortunately, the paint-by-numbers dialogue and simplistic gameplay offer little in the way of replay value, leaving only the three training dojos with various degrees of difficulty to offer anything beyond some cosmetic unlocks. I love Star Wars, and it remains my go-to movie comfort food. Vader Immortal certainly looks and sounds the part, but outside of being visually impressive and occasionally making me feel like a badass, it just really didn't excite me that much. As you may or may not know, I hate numbered review scores and instead rate games on the basis of buy it, burn it, or wait on it, along with some details on who this may be aimed at. Like I said, this game is aimed at the masses and as such makes it a fantastic pick up and play experience to put new VR users and Star Wars fans alike inside. Veteran VR gamers who aren't huge fans of the franchise will likely play it once and keep it for show and tell, while Star Wars fans who play VR may play it a few times just for the fanfare and then do the same. Given the production quality on display here, I think $30 is a fair price for the three episode series if you plan to play it and show it off. If it's just for you, I recommend you check in with your inner Star Wars fan and decide if it's better left for a sale. Anyways guys, that's it for me, thanks for watching, and you know the deal, if you like this video, please hit that like button, and if you'd like to see more VR content from me, please consider subscribing, and for video updates, hit that bell icon. I'll catch you guys on my next video.